You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Sephora sale is coming to town. What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Do you see the smile on my face? You know why I'm excited. It is time for the Sephora Holiday Savings Event 2023. One of the biggest beauty events of the year and this is going to be my recommendations video, at least as it pertains to the new makeup releases that have come out since the past sale. Make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel because next week I'm gonna be coming out with another video talking about some of my tried and true classics, some of my all time luxury beauty favorites that I also recommend for this upcoming sale. And by the way, if you are new here, welcome. My name is Sophia. I am a complete luxury beauty addict and I upload new videos just like this one every single week. So if you love luxury beauty, hit that subscribe button to join our fam. And as a quick reminder, guys, all the products that I mentioned in this video, they're all gonna be linked down below. Thank you so much to those of you who shop through my affiliate links for this sale. It really does support my channel and I really appreciate it. You don't have to, but when you shop through my links, I do earn a small commission that goes back to supporting my relatively small YouTube channel. So I just wanna say that real quick. Thank you guys so much for your support this year and also with this sale. And without further ado, guys, let's get into these recommendations. All right, party people, are you ready? Are you ready? I have narrowed down my recommendations to three holiday collections, limited edition items that are not going to be around for super long. And then I also have 12 permanent collection items, at least I think they're permanent, that came out in 2023 that I've never talked about in any of my other Sephora recommendations videos. So these are new things you might wanna get that you never were able to get in previous sales. So let's start off with the festive holiday collection, shall we? Starting off with the Guerlain holiday collection. Oh my gosh, I think this is a stunning, collection and I was so excited to see some of the products from this collection pop up at Sephora because they're expensive and it's nice to get a little bit of a discount. By far the most popular product in this collection are the limited edition meteorites. Can we just take a look at the tin? It is gorgeous. It's like a green tortoiseshell with a gold scallop detail. Just just imagine this, just imagine this sitting on your vanity, not even during the holiday, just all year round. Absolutely stunning. If you've never used the meteorites before, they're kind of like a finishing powder, a blurring powder. I have it on my face today. So it gives a nice sort of veil or filter over the face. They are highly fragrant, so just kind of keep that in mind. It's Guerlain, they are a fragrance house. And another thing to keep in mind, guys, is that unfortunately this is an existing shade of the meteorites. It is zero to fair, if I'm not mistaken. So that's a little bit lame that it's an existing shade, but if you like that shade, or if you've been wanting to try the meteorites, you might wanna check this out. The other piece that they have at Sephora from this collection is the eyeshadow palette. Now I know that the packaging isn't for everybody. It's kind of like a disco tiger. The whole collection as a whole, it's basically inspired by the animal kingdom. So it's kind of like fantastic beasts holiday party edition, if that makes sense. So I know the packaging isn't for everybody, but I think it's super cool. I think it's really fun. And then same thing with the color story. I know this isn't for everybody guys, but the formula is really beautiful. And I actually just posted a full review of this collection. So if you're curious about this, I show you in the review different ways that you can kind of combine the colors to make it wearable. You actually have a lot of options with this color story and I'm wearing it on my eyes today. So if you like this look, you can create this if you get this palette. The shadows are just so smooth and the formula is actually different from last year's palette and a lot of the other ones that I have from Guerlain. It's not that it's better or worse, but it is a little bit different and it might be more to your preference. So once again, check out that review, but highly, highly recommend that you look into the Guerlain holiday for the Sephora sale so you can get a little bit of a discount because it's expensive. Holiday collection number two that I recommend are the Hourglass Unlocked Holiday 2023 Ambient Lighting Palettes. Hopefully I got that name right. You know what I'm talking about. The Hourglass Holiday Palettes, I'm sure you've seen a good jillion reviews of these already. Maybe you watched my review. I picked up the Jellyfish palette and the Snake palette. And even though in my review, I was obviously, you know, very critical. I always share the pros and cons and what I would want to see from each of the palettes. I still really enjoy using these. I think the artwork is really cute. The quality is usually pretty consistent with Hourglass, although I wouldn't say these are like a good 
value product wise, it really what you're getting is just kind of a palette that has everything in one. So it's kind of the convenience, it's the curation, it's the whole thing. You're not getting like more product for your money like you might with other brands. But that being said, I still really enjoy these. I would say I use the Jellyfish palette a little bit more nowadays just because we're going into the winter time and I'm not wearing quite as much bronzer. My tan is fading a little bit, the little bit of tan that I had and the blushes are a little bit more subtle. And a lot of you guys have told me that you are pretty fair skinned and you felt like palettes from years past, the finishing powders were too dark for you. So if you are fair skinned, the Jellyfish palette might be a really good option that you weren't able to get before with previous holiday palettes. Now the Snake palette, I like that if I wanna go for more of like a beachy look, if I wanna be more tan, it has a lot of coral shades in there. Great for sort of light to medium skin tones. So all in all guys, I've been really happy with my palettes. There's a lot of other great powders from Hourglass also on Sephora, and I pretty much recommend all of them, the blushes, the bronzers, the finishing powders. So if you're looking at the holiday palette and it's just a little bit too expensive for you, even with the discount, or you don't think you're gonna use half of the shades, maybe pick up one of the singles. And they also have minis as well. And the minis aren't too bad price-wise and they last a really long time. So just something to think about, friends. That is my recommendation number two for the holiday releases. And the third holiday collection that I recommend to you guys is the Dior Backstage Holiday Collection. We have the Copper Essentials Palette and the Silver Essentials Palette. And then we have the two limited edition lip maximizers in hollow silver and actually the one that I'm wearing today, which is in pure copper. All of these products are really good. You have kind of like the brown and reddish and kind of golden warm tones of the copper collection. And then you have the beautiful cool tone frostiness of the silver collection. I did a full review of these products. So if you wanna see more swatches, once again, you can check that out on my channel page, but I really liked this collection. And it really brought me back to Dior Backstage because I had kind of written off the eyeshadow palettes. Whatever the first palette they came out with, I really didn't like the formula but I was very pleasantly surprised by these and I really liked the looks that I created. Some of you guys were asking me, how did these backstage palettes compare with the holiday palettes in the main line? Those holiday palettes, they are just more metallic. Like they have a brighter, more pigmented look when you swatch them and apply them to the eye. And I think it's just because it's the holiday collection. So they're formulated in that manner for that type of aesthetic. The backstage ones are a little bit more subtle, but you get more shades. So you kind of get more shades for your money. It just depends on what sorts of looks you're going for. Unfortunately, Dior Holiday, the main line, is not on Sephora right now. I really hope it pops up in time for the sale. Obviously, I'm filming this video like a couple days before it goes live. So I'm crossing my fingers and I'm checking every day, guys. If it does come to Sephora, then my fourth recommendation for the holiday collections would definitely be the two holiday eyeshadow palettes from Dior. So those are my holiday recommendations. Now let's get into the permanent products that I recommend. I'm not really gonna go in any particular order, friends. I have 12 recommendations to share with you guys that are permanent products, but I'm gonna kind of start off with eyeshadow palettes and foundations because that seems to be what most people want recommendations for when it comes to this sale. And the first eyeshadow palette that I need to recommend to you are none other, are we surprised? Then the YSL Mini Couture Clutch Palettes. These are a new release this year from YSL and we've been waiting for them to show up at Sephora and they are finally here, friends. And they have a couple color stories. I think they have four or five. And I definitely think that these are going to sell out or at least certain colorways will. They're permanent though. So don't worry. They're going to come back in stock. I always get questions like, are they coming back? They're going to come back. But I do think that some of the color stories are going to sell out really quick. What I think we all love about these is the formula is so uniquely creamy. It looks so beautiful and smooth on the eyes, especially if maybe you have more mature lids or you're like me, you have eczema on your eyelids throughout the winter. You just want something that looks very smooth and elegant. These are fantastic. They also come with beautiful, super cute YSL packaging. It really looks like a mini clutch. <laughs> it's just adorable. I love using them. The color stories, they're not groundbreaking, but they are very wearable and delightful to use. And I'm excited for you guys to be able to get a little bit of a discount on these. My only call out that I've made in my many reviews of these color stories is that some of them do have shades that are a little bit glittery. It's a very fine sparkle, 
but some, you know, they're glittery. If you aren't into glitter, maybe check out those Dior Backstage palettes that I mentioned a second ago. The Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette. I feel like every YouTuber is going to be recommending this one. This is just such a beautiful palette from Natasha, and I really feel like she has been killing it with the quality lately, which has kept me coming back. The midi size palettes are my favorite palettes. Those are the ones that I tend to recommend. I know a lot of people like the mini ones, but I like to reach for palettes that have more shades. And so I kind of get a little bit more for my money. It's a better value and I can create more looks with one palette. And I really like the fact that she incorporated so many different textures into what is basically like a neutral palette. She could have made it super boring, but she put in all of these beautiful textures. There's some that are more glittery. There are some that give kind of a wet look to the eye. There's mattes. There's all types of things to play around with here. If you want to go super basic and you want to do a quick little one and done for work in the morning, you can do that. But if you want to add a little bit of sparkle for something else, you can do that as well. I wouldn't say it's my favorite Natasha Denona palette because I tend to maybe just appreciate and be inspired more by some of her more colorful ones. But this is the one that I probably would buy as a gift for somebody. Or if one of my family members were asking me, Sophia, what's a good neutral palette to buy from Sephora? This would definitely be in like one of the top five. I also want to give a quick shout out to the Natasha Denona Yucca palette because this palette, I know the color story isn't for everybody. So this isn't what I would recommend for somebody that loves neutrals or to give as a gift or anything like that. But if you're looking for something unique, I highly recommend this because the quality is so good. Just like the I Need a Nude palette, there's a lot of beautiful textures and formulas to play around with. Check out my review if you want a little bit of inspo because I show you guys three very wearable looks that you can create with the shades here that are not too crazy. You don't need fake eyelashes. You're not doing any cut creases or anything like that. But the looks on the palette are just so so cool this is a palette that i have a lot of fun using like the i need a new palette i think it's cute and as long as it's not fun it's just like it doesn't give me that much inspiration when i use the yucca palette i'm like whoa what am i what am i about to create right now i'm sitting here because i want to have fun with makeup and i think that's who this palette is for so i wanted to give a shout out to that as well i do recommend the yucca palette it's not the most wearable one in the world but I really appreciate that she came out with something different this year. It's really good. Those are my top three eyeshadow palettes, friends. I am gonna talk about some more classics and favorites in my other Sephora recommendations video. But right now we're gonna move on to foundations. And I'm sure many of you guys are not surprised that I'm gonna recommend to you the Danessa Myricks Yummy Serum Skin Tint. I absolutely love this. I just did a new foundation ranking video. I think it was last month. And this one came out very, very high in the ranking. You should check that out if you're shopping for foundations for the Sephora sale. This is my favorite skin tint to date. There's just something about it. It has a beautiful texture. It's not too sticky. It's not too dewy, but it still gives you a ton of moisture and glow. I do have dry skin if you're new here. Hi, my name's Sophia. I have dry skin. I get eczema too if I don't really take care of my skin correctly. And so I'm looking for something that's going to keep me hydrated day in and day out. And I also like the fact that this skin tint, it does have a decent amount of pigmentation. It's not like those skin tints that just give you like a teeny little like touch of color, like the Chanel Water Fresh tint. Love that product. But for day to day, I usually want something that's more like light to medium. And that's what I get from the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin. I don't like the other yummy skin products in the line. The primer's okay. The other products are a little bit too full coverage for me and they're a little bit too drying. So if you ever felt that way about the Yummy Skin line, you know, they work for some people, but not, not for everybody, then maybe check out the beautiful skin tint. And my second foundation recommendation is actually the one that I'm wearing on my skin today. This is the Glossier Foundation. A lot of you guys didn't watch my review of this and I don't know why. Don't sleep on this foundation. It is beautiful. I would say it's kind of a natural to soft matte finish, but it's not drying on the skin. And I think it has a pretty friendly price point compared to a lot of other foundations that are maybe a little bit more solidly in like the luxury category. If you're looking for something that has good wear time, that's not like super dewy. Maybe you're transitioning from more of like your light dewy summertime self into, you know, your more matte holiday glam type of self. I don't know if you want something that's a little bit more matte, check out the Glossier foundation. I feel like they have a pretty decent shade range and Glossier is now sold at Sephora as of earlier this year. I know a lot of you guys already know that, but they have a lot of really good products 
And the Glossier foundation is definitely one of my faves now. Concealers, the Makeup by Mario concealer, I actually have really liked. That is what I'm wearing on my skin today. And I've been talking about it in a lot of my favorites videos. I don't know why, but it doesn't have good reviews on Sephora. A lot of people feel like it's drying. They don't like it. I feel like it's great. I think it looks good. And once again, I have a lot of dryness, especially around my eye area. I always prep my skin for pretty much any kind of concealer. And I feel like it looks really good. It's very illuminating and brightening, not as much as like the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin, for example. So you can kind of use it on other parts of your face if you wanted to, but I really like to use this under the eyes. I feel like it's probably like medium to full coverage, but it's not super heavy on my skin. I think it's an all around really nice concealer and I really like the wear time of it as well. The shade range is a little bit weird. I had to kind of go in store and exchange and you know find my shade. So if you're shopping in store, this might be one that is good to pick up in store, but otherwise I've actually been really, really liking it. Another concealer that's very similar, but maybe even more a little bit lightweight is the Armani Power Fabric matte concealer. They reformulated the power fabric concealer and I was very concerned. And they said that now it's like a matte finish, but I did a side-by-side -side comparison for you guys in one of my try-on videos and I really couldn't tell the difference. It's still super duper good. It does have kind of a matte finish, but it doesn't dry out the skin and it is very, very illuminating. That's what I really liked about the original Power Fabric Concealer that you can just put a little bit under your eyes and it just kind of blurs anything that you have going on. Or if you have kind of like some puffiness under your eyes, you could also kind of trace around any little bags or flaws that you have and it just kind of completely blurs any of the shadows. It's also very long wearing. If you have maybe more mature skin, I would probably go for the Armani Power Fabric. And then if you don't, or if you want something that's maybe a little bit more full coverage, I would probably go for the Makeup by Mario. I have one new bronzer release to recommend to you guys. I know I did a whole bronzer ranking earlier this year, but actually a lot of the bronzers on that list I had in my other <laughs> Sephora recommendations video. So if you're shopping for bronzers, you can check out that video. I was trying to figure out which ones I liked that actually came out more recently. And thankfully, thankfully, one of my favorite ones wasn't in my last Sephora recommendations video, and that is the NARS Laguna Talc Free Bronzing Powder. This is such a nice bronzer. The powders are so finely milled, have like a slightly like buttery feel to them, but they blend on so well and they just give this beautiful golden kind of slightly airbrushed sheen to the skin. They're talc free and most importantly they have a decent amount of shades. They have the most shades I think out of any brand at Sephora. I like the lightest shade. That's the one that I tend to use the most. I think it's Laguna 00. I think Laguna 02 is the original shade that they have in the line. Such a fantastic bronzer. And it also comes in many sizes, which is great. So if you wanna give it a try, or if you want something just a little bit more compact, or if you're on a budget, then give the mini one a try because I have the mini one as well. I have two blush recommendations. And the first one is actually another Makeup by Mario product. And I was a little bit surprised by these. I wasn't expecting to like them as much as I did. These are the cream blushes that he came out with earlier this year. These are called the Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veil. Now, I think the shades are very safe, but they are very beautiful and very wearable. There's something really nice about this formula. It just spreads across the skin so beautifully. It doesn't disturb your foundation. It's not like, too greasy but it's also not so super pigmented where you feel like you're gonna put on like way too much and you're gonna look like a clown it just gives this really beautiful supple look to the skin i love them they came out pretty high in the cream blush ranking video that i did earlier this year and i just felt like these were the ones that maybe you guys wouldn't be thinking about or maybe have forgotten about because there's so many other popular cream blushes at sephora i really really like these and i think the colors are very elegant as well and then for a powder blush recommendation i'm cheating a little bit here guys because it's the gucci blushes because they came out with new shades so it's not a new product i know but they did come out with new shades. And what I really like about the new shades is that they're a little bit deeper and kind of more pigmented than the other ones that they released previously. They're all super beautiful, but if you had a deeper skin tone or if you're like me and you just like 
bold blush or something a little bit richer, then definitely check them out because they have those new shades. And in particular, maybe not the true pink one, but the other two shades, the intense plum and the soft red, those work really well for fall and winter. They're a little bit deeper. So if you're kind of going for that more like bright blush type of look during the fall and winter, then these are good ones to check out as well. You guys already know, I really like the formula of these. It's demi matte. It spreads across the cheek really beautifully. I've already done a ton of reviews on these and the packaging is oh so cute as well. A product that I feel like isn't getting that much love are the new Dior Dior Show on stage liners. These eyeliners are so good guys. I only have or I have the brown shade and I have the white shade but the brown one is the one that I use the most. It is my go-to brown liner. You have the pencil on one end and then you also have the little smudgy bit on the other end so you can kind of smudge things out if you want to go for maybe like that soft grunge type of trend. You guys know what I'm talking about. I love these because not only do they sort of glide across the eye and they're sort of easy to work with if you wanna create, once again, either a smudgy look or like a graphic line, but they last all day. They're not that hard to remove, but they last all day. I really don't like it when my eyeliners transfer down here if I look like a raccoon at the end of the day. So I really love these for their longevity. So if you guys are looking for like your new go-to eyeliner, they have these at Sephora and I'm pretty sure they have all of the shades. Other than the new Dior Lip Maximizers, my other lip recommendation that you can find at Sephora are the new Charlotte Tilbury Liquid Lipsticks. These are the Airbrush Flawless Lip Blurs. And if you're somebody that's kind of afraid of liquid lipsticks normally, you might wanna check these out because they don't fully set down and because of that, they are very comfortable on the lips. They have that kind of like airy, moussey type of feel. So they're not gonna be transfer proof or anything like that, but they still have pretty good longevity. They feel really nice on the lips and they give that like beautiful kind of plush matte look to the lips. I have the Flame Blur, I think is the color that I have. It's this beautiful bright orangey red, but they have some really good nudes. Something that you can kind of just apply on the go if you want that kind of matte look, but maybe you don't wanna go for a regular matte revolution lipstick from Charlotte Tilbury. And then my last recommendation, friends, is a mascara favorite. It is the one that I have on my lashes today that I cannot stop wearing. It is the Benefit Fan Fest Mascara. I've already talked so many times about this mascara, so forgive me if I'm just repeating myself, but I really like this one because it gives you such beautiful separation to the lashes. I feel like when I put two coats, I get decent volume, but it is a little bit more about the length and the separation. And most importantly for me, the longevity. It lasts all day. It doesn't flake. Like it is on there, but it's not a tubing formula. So if you don't like tubing formulas, this is a really good option that is still long lasting. I like the wand. It's kind of a little bit slimmer and slightly curved. So you can really get in there and get like every single lash. It's a fantastic mascara. And that is all I have for you today, friends. Those are my top picks, at least as far as new makeup goes. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Now it is your turn. Comment down below and let me know what you think of all of my picks and make sure that you subscribe and stay tuned for the other Sephora sale recommendations videos that I'm gonna be coming out with because it's not always about the new new. Sometimes there are just classic products that we've always had our eye on that work just as good, if not better, than the new collections. So make sure you are subscribed to my channel, guys. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day, and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye. <music>